Welcome to the CMC Markets webinar with myself, David Madden, on Monday, the 4th of September. Uh, we'll just kick off the webinar now. The time is 12.15. Uh, as always, before we actually progress with an, into the webinar itself, we do have to go through the risk warning uh, slides. So I'll just leave the slides on the screen for a number of seconds uh, for, you to have a, uh, for you to have a read through. Uh, it essentially states that this is a this, this is a discussion about what's going on in the financial markets, but nothing we say should be construed as actual uh, investment advice or trading advice. So as always, we'll just leave the risk warning screens, uh, if risk warning slides on the screen, and you just have a have a read through them, and we'll be kicking off the webinar properly uh, in one minute's time. And now that we've gotten the actual risk warning out of the way, we can now proceed with the actual webinar. Uh, so looking at the equity markets uh, and the big news in the, in the financial markets over the, over the weekend uh, was the news that North Korea um, is testing another nuclear missile. This has obviously spooked financial markets uh, and we've seen a large, reasonably big sell-off, a uh, reasonable sell-off in, in, uh, in European equity markets. Um, it hasn't been the most serious sell-off we've seen in recent weeks whenever there's been heightened tensions uh, surrounding North Korea. But nonetheless, traders are, are still on the fearful side of things. South Korea feel we could speak, uh, uh, North Korea are, are actually preparing, uh, pre pre preparing uh, more missiles, so traders are going to remain on edge. Um, obviously, the standoff has been going on for some weeks now, and every time we've seen tensions ratchet up to a new, to a new level, uh, the, the, the classic knee-jerk reaction has been a risk-off strategy. We've seen money pour out of equity markets and pour into the classic safe havens such as gold. Uh, on top of that, uh, we've also seen, we've also seen um, you know, money going to the Swiss franc and other classic safe haven play. So the big kind of news over the over the past uh, 24 hours or so, 48 hours, has really been the sell-off in relation to what, what's going on uh, in North Korea. Uh, on today is Labor Day in the United States of America. So even though the indices, uh, the, actual, the actual indices um, are, the, are available for trading, the cash equity market in the United States is closed. So what we could see is any, we do see any movements in the U.S. index futures. It may not be, uh, it may not be kind of a true reflection of what's going on in the actual market, seeing as the underlying stock market in the United States is closed for U.S. Labor Day. As always, uh, we have a quick quick run through of uh, looking ahead to what, what, what we can expect in terms of big economic and corporate announcements over the next few trading trading days. Then we'll go through the major uh, markets and then uh, and then we'll, we'll wrap it up with any kind of questions you have at the end of the webinar. So looking taking a look um, at, the, at the week ahead, this can be found by going on to the news and analysis section of our website uh, on our news and analysis. From there, you then click on the topic, third option down, weekly outlook. And then on the weekly outlook, click on it here, gives a breakdown of the major um, both economic, central bank, and corporate stories which are in play over the next few days. So taking a look here, uh, we can see here that we have a number of updates from a number of central banks, the European Central Bank on Thursday, the Reserve Bank of Australia, and also the Bank of Canada rate decision. Uh, the ECB is probably going to be the biggest one to watch out for from this, from this part of the world. Uh, traders are already speculating that Mario Draghi uh, is going to voice his concerns uh, about the strength of the euro. Obviously, the, the very loose monetary policy that the European Central Bank have had in place for the last number of years is showing signs, um, has been showing signs of it working. We have seen a decline in unemployment, a lot of the broad economic indicators such as services, manufacturing, construction, they've all been on, on the rise. But what happens when, you're, when, you're, when the region picks up, traders then want to buy your currency because your, your region is growing. But then when your currency becomes a bit too strong or relatively strong to other currencies, you can see have that a negative impact. So Mr. Draghi on Thursday's meeting is tipped to talk about how he, he is, uh, how the strength of the euro is, is actually uh, acting as a, as a bit of a curtail uh, to the eurozone recovery. Also, what we have Tuesday, uh, a, red, a red decision from the Reserve Bank of Australia. 
uh, with rate decision, no change uh, is, is expected is expected on, 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 that, on, on that regard. Uh, in relation to what's going on in the Australian dollar, the Australian dollar has been quite strong. We've seen a rebound in commodity prices. Um, also, what we're seeing is uh, we've seen a broadly speaking decline in the US dollar in the last few months. So that, that's, that's also propping up the Australian dollar. Speaking of commodity currencies, we have a rate decision from the Reserve Bank, from the Bank of Canada on Wednesday. Uh, we're not expecting any rate rise out of Canada, uh, but, but seeing as seeing as we had a rate a rate hike from Canada uh, only last month um, from from the, from the from the Bank of Canada, we're not really expecting anyone on uh, on Wednesday coming up. But also, if you do trade the the dollar loony, the dollar CAD, it's obviously something to to, uh, to keep an eye out for. Uh, we do have some data coming out uh, from China uh, on Friday. Bearing in mind, we had some good uh, manufacturing numbers coming out of China, both the private survey and also the official survey were, were quite strong. And now we're looking towards the service sector. And Beijing are making a concerted effort to move away from kind of a heavy industry economy more towards a service-based economy. So keep an eye out um, for, the, for, those chi- for those figures from China, which will be out in the early hours of Friday morning. Taking a look at the corporate front, um, it's, we have a few companies reporting numbers out as always, but to be perfectly honest, nothing overly popular. Um, <clears throat> taking a look to tomorrow, uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprises had the third quarter numbers out. Here in the UK, Redrow, one of the home builders, uh, have their full numbers out. Sticking with the home builders, we have Barrett Development and full numbers on Wednesday. Sticking again with home builders, Bobus Homes have, half, have their half yearly figures out on Thursday. Uh, that's probably there are the kind of major companies um, uh, in terms of our kind of popularity with our clients here uh, to, to keep an eye out for. Uh, so I'm now going to run through some of the major markets uh, which clients trade and I will have discussion in relation to the popular markets and then if there's any markets that I haven't covered and you would like me to like to, like to have a chat about uh, feel free to stick that in the actual comment box itself. So as I mentioned, a uh, sell-off in eurozone, uh, sorry, European uh, equity markets this morning. Uh, just taking a look now at the FTSE 100, the UK 100. Um, what we can see here that it's been broadly been pushing lower over the last number of months, and this region here, uh, just south of 7,300, um, 7,288 is key support, major support um, on the FTSE 100. So on one hand, it's been finding it very difficult to, to move south of that price, but at the same time, it hasn't really made any kind of major gains to the upside. It's broadly speaking negative, but it's more of a kind of a sideways negative than an outright negative. You'll see what I mean when I bring up the uh, the DAX, the German market, in a second. That's been a very clear and concise downward trend, where this is kind of more range bound. So moves to the upside. If if you do kind of if you do see a push higher in the FTSE 100, the, the first level, uh, there is the resistance uh, to, keep, to keep an eye out for from Friday will be 7,461. If you do see a move beyond that, the next level um, some traders may be looking out for could be the, the old support, new, resist, new resistance at 7,481, this region here. And if we were to take out the high in August of 7,552, that would be quite a bullish indicator, and that would be a sign that we're I've kind of broken out of the kind of range-bound um, area that we've been in for the last number of months, and that would be a sign that we're going kind to of potentially moving on to the you know um, the June highs and potentially to sell on record highs. But what we could see is we've seen a lot of kind of range-bound activity on the FTSE 100 in recent months, so it's probably possibly more likely we're just going to stay in the same kind of uh, range area here. The market may find it difficult to go north of 7,500 and to the downside, if you do see any kind of uh, moves lower, which you have seen moves lower in the last few months, um, the, the support at 7,350 uh, will be the first level to watch out for. And then south of that, the, the support, the key support at 7,288. As you can see here, this line here has been a major uh, support region for the FTSE 100. So we could actually see fresh buyers come into the mix if we do see the market heading down to that level again, but also a key support, if and when it finally actually is broken, that's when we could see 
a, a wave of selling potentially. So we're turning our attention now to the German market, and you now see what it means about how the FTSE is relatively range bound, uh, whereas the eurozone markets, uh, such as the DAX, are in a very clear and obvious downward trend. So this is the all time high that was created here in June, and as we can see, we've been creating a very clear and obvious downward trend. Classic downward trend, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, and now we're seeing another lower high. So while we rem remain south of this price price action here, um, 12,343, which would be the which is, which is the high from August, the outlook for the DAX is going to remain negative. So, but if we do take out that that, that level, we could then we, we could see some additional buy move in because that would be taking out a previous lower high, and the next level to watch out for north of that will be the 100-day moving average, which previously acted as support and is now potentially may act as resistance, uh, that comes into play at 12,445. And then looking north of that, we'd be looking up towards 12,576 should we continue to should we continue to press higher. But as I mentioned, we're in a fairly clear uh, downward trend. Uh, we've already kind of tested uh, the 200 day moving average this morning. The 200 day moving average is currently just north of 12,000, uh, 12,041. So should we trade below the 200 day moving average, which we've done previously, uh, only last week on Tuesday, we could be seeing uh, a move down towards retesting of that level, that low of 11,867. As you can see, we've, we've been clearly kind of printing new lows, not, not, not new lows, but um, you know taking our previous lows, and that is in a fairly obvious sign that we're in a downward trend on the uh, Germany 30 on the DAX. Should we take out 11,867, traders will then be looking towards 11,800 region or just shy of 11,700 at 11,692. As I mentioned at the very beginning of the webinar, the cash markets, the individual equities for the for America for um, on the American Stock Exchange are not traded today, uh, but the futures market is open on the ind on the index itself, and because of that. Uh, the actual, you can actually trade the Dow Jones and the S&P 500, even though the actual underlying equity markets are shut. The U.S. equity markets have been in a better shape than what's going on in Europe, uh, particularly the the eurozone equity markets have been have, have been have been stuck in a in a negative move for the last few months. So when we did have uncertainty surrounding North Korea, we certainly did have a have a large sell-off in the Dow Jones. But as we can see here, the market has been pushing higher for the last couple of weeks or just over two weeks. So the, the trend is going to back up to the upside. Negative momentum is clearly in a in a um, is clearly declining. So that could be seen that whatever selling pressure that, that has been going on is waning a bit. So the kind of the bears are kind of running out or running out of steam so as the market as the equity market is actually pushing higher. So levels to watch out for to the upside on the on the Dow Jones. Will be 12,000, sorry, 22,087, and then north of that, we'd be looking towards 22,200, 300, 400, so on and so forth. Should we see any moves to the downside in the Dow Jones, uh, areas of support, potential support may come into play at 21,816, and then this region here, where the 50 day moving average is uh, 21,738, down to around 21,700. 21, Notice how just south of the of the 50 day moving average on two occasions the market traded just south of it and then pushed back above it again. So that's why I mentioned we could, that's why I mentioned the market as an exactly from, uh, as an exactly received support from precisely the 50 day moving average just been a bit below it. So the region between 21,738 down to around 20, 21,700 that region may act as support. Should we see a, a, a sell-off in the Dow futures? It's a similar picture for the S&P 500. Take a look at that, whereby the market has been moving higher for the last maybe say two weeks or or two and a half weeks, and we've actually swung to positive territory, positive momentum uh, in the S&P 500. So while there was intense selling pressure, we did see the market push lower. But as we as we saw a turnaround in the equity market on the S&P 500, we did see is kind of confirmed by the decline in negative momentum and now it's swung to positive momentum 
and our policy momentum is actually increasing. Granted, we have pulled back a, a small bit. Here, we have pulled back a small bit here uh, from uh, from Friday's session, but by and large, <clears throat> it is looking a bit more positive than what we've, what we've seen here in Europe. So, levels to watch out for to the upside for the S&P 500 will be. 2,480 and then 2,490 and 2,500. Uh, and then if we do see any pullbacks, we could see some uh, we, we could see support come into play in around the 50-day moving average at 2,453 or down to around 2,450 itself. South of that, uh, this this reaches this price actually this price region here of 2,442. Turning our attention now to gold, which has had the kind of opposite, opposite uh, uh, move in, the, in comparison with equity markets. The classic risk on trade, or sorry, the classic risk off move rather, has been to pour cash into uh, the classic safe haven trades such as gold. So whereas equity markets uh, have been under pressure, and you have and you have markets like Germany printing printing month, multi month lows uh, last week. Can, on the opposite side of the, the story, you've gold. Uh, pre printing fresh highs. So gold here, and uh, this morning traded um, the high of, from, from gold this morning, took off the high in November. In case you're wondering what date that was, that was the night of the U.S. presidential election when Trump was elected. So we've created a, we've created a, a new multi-month high for the um, for the for the price of gold. As you can see, it's in a fairly clear and, uh, and obvious upward trend with you know, creating multi-month highs. What we're seeing down here is also an increase in positive momentum. So that, that, that shows you that that momentum is clearly with the buyers. If you continue to move on higher, the next region we could be watching out for, uh, for on the price of gold uh, potentially is 13.58, which as you can see here, looking at the back kind of late or last quarter, a second last quarter of 20. 2016, we did see some resistance come into play uh, just shy of 1360 in around the, in the 1358 region. Moves lower in gold could find support in a 1326. As I mentioned, if there's any markets that you would like me to cover, uh, and just please put it in the box and I'll happily uh, go through those, those details. Sticking with the commodities theme, let's turn, turn our attention now to the oil markets. Looking now at, at oil, what have, we, what have we seen here on the Brent crude, Brent crude contract? The rebound that we saw since, Jul, since June has kind of run out a bit of a steam and it's been very much range bound. Broadly speaking, just shy of $54 uh, down to around $50 a barrel. Um, this is the kind of, this is this is the price action that I've been talking about uh, in, on Brent for the last number of um, last number of weeks. Very much kind of range bound. It can't seem to kind of make its mind up either way. And obviously the, the situation with the tropical storm Harvey has obviously has obviously seen a has obviously kind of has obviously kind of brought well, brought um, some new kind of issues to the oil market into the mix. Looking here, we can just about see that the oil market has been supported. By the 200-day moving average at 52.21, uh, should we remain north of that, uh, we could see we could see we could see resistance uh, come into play at uh, $53 a barrel, and then should we move north to 53, the level to watch out for to the upside would then be the August high of 53.83. As you can see here, the price is trading in a relatively low range. There, it's still in negative momentum, but the momentum is dissipating, so it could suggest that whatever kind of selling pressure is out there is declining. But at the same time, we haven't we haven't seen oil uh, in, in positive m momentum for some time. Should he move south of the 30-day moving average, uh, which is $52.21, the next potential level of support would be would be this price here, which you know just shy, just just below. Fifty-one dollars a barrel at uh, fifty dollars and sixty-three cents, which kind of almost coincides with both the fifty-day moving average and also the one-hundred-day moving average in this price region here. WTI is actually has been a, a bit of a uh, different story, a bit of divergence between the two. Uh, the long and the short of it is that when you have refineries in the United States, was taking crude oil and refining it to very different to very different petroleum-related products. 
and, the, and when those commission and when those refineries are out of commission and not, are not in use due to the flooding on the back of a tropical storm Harvey, the demand and input into those refineries has, de- has been has been in decline because they're out of commission, and that's why we're seeing uh, some weakness in the price of oil recently. And that's why there's also been a divergence between Brent um, between WTI and Brent on top of that. So. Similar situation, the charts for the two energy markets are fairly similar, but obviously the tropical storm Harvey has brought, brought things into a bit of a mix. Notice how the market has been broadly been moving lower uh, in, in throughout the month of August, tying in with the wider 2017, 2017 theme of a decline in the oil market. And notice how the 50 day moving average acted as support here. Uh, but then the market couldn't sustain it, and as soon as it moved, as soon as it moved south of it, it then became resistance. But the push higher from Friday, uh, seeing it being kind of effectively kind of trade in around the 50-day moving average for the last num- for the last number of days, it's still a not negative momentum, but negative momentum is in decline. So it could be a sign that we're potentially looking to turn positive um, on uh, on the uh, in terms of momentum on the price of WTI. But, but realistically, it's also been fairly kind of range bound and uh, uh, over the last number of weeks. So if we do see the price of oil lift higher, the next, uh, the next potential resistance level to watch out for is going to be this price here at forty-eight dollars and twenty-three cents. Then, of course, uh, beyond that, the two-day moving average will be a, an important level to keep out for, which comes into play at forty-nine dollars and thirty-one cents. And then we'd be looking towards the kind of the highs of August and the highs of, of late July at fifty dollars and twenty seven cents. Moves lower uh, in the price of WTI <clears throat> we'll be back towards forty five dollars and twenty four cents. And then south of that we'd be looking towards forty four bucks and forty three dollars and fifty six cents on the price of oil. Looking now to euro dollar, as I mentioned, Mario Draghi um, is due to speak on on Thursday, and, and Mr. Draghi is tipped or, or is believed to, anyways, uh, start talking about the the strength of the euro. Uh, on Friday, just gone, the great timing by, by Mr. Draghi, uh, just after the softer than expected non-farm payrolls come out on the Friday, just gone, the European Central Bank stated that they won't be looking to address uh, or or look to have a plan to taper the European Central Bank's bond buying scheme until at least December. So that was their way of saying that, right guys, we, we've like, heard your concerns about, and here we've heard, we've heard that you're speculating when we're going to trim our bond buying scheme, but guys, we're not in a position to do anything until at least December. So that's the ECB's way of telling us that it's on the radar, but uh, we're, not, we're not really in a position to do it yet, but they have acknowledged, uh, because clearly there's been so much pressure from the financial markets that, when the ECB going to at least announce taper or talk about tapering? Because remember, when this when the ECB's bond buying scheme was introduced in the first place, it was talked about and then confirmed and months before it was actually introduced. So the ECB ideally would like to keep, keep the currency as, as, as long as possible. It is in their interest to keep the currency weak because that assists the recovery. But look at, looking here at, at the chart, it's in a very clear, obvious um, push higher. It's been pushing higher for, for several months now. But we have seen a bit of a uh, a bit of a wobble here. Um, interesting enough, the market pushed well above the 120 level uh, nearly l- last Tuesday. But ever since then, had a quick, fairly, a quick, fairly quick sell off, and hasn't really man hasn't really kind of man- moved managed to actually get north of that uh, to get back above to get back up to it. So you'd almost want to see the um, the market move the euro dollar move north of uh, say the 120 region again before we can actually kind of be, be more confident that the wider bullish bullish trend is in play. Notice how you see, you see have a rel- relatively small range in around here, could point towards some indecision. We have seen we did see a decline in positive momentum and slip into negative momentum, which is still which is still in play. Uh, so look, look look out for if you are looking out for if you're looking to go long um, just bearing in mind that the higher the, the market moves up in the first place, the, the more confident you can be of a positive move. So we are seeing some indecision. So should we break north of 120, then potentially we may see uh, further gains extended from there. To the downside, if we do see this low taken out here, uh, which, which is in at 118, 118.23, 118, 
that could be a sign that we're, we've got more more um, more ground to lose. South of 118.23, traders on the NBA looking towards this the low here from the previous Friday at 117.73, and then we could see it moves back towards 117.80 in, in this price in this region here. Look at now cable. Wait for the chart to come up. This is a so by and large cable had a, had a pretty poor August. Uh, the Dubis update from the Bank of England at the very beginning of August is kind of set set the tone for the month. But we have seen um, the price of, of cable turn around. As you can see here, as the market was pushing lower, we saw a fairly clean and we saw a fairly we saw a fairly uh, obvious uh, increase in negative momentum. But this is this is why I often like to talk about momentum uh, in, in webinars because you want to see that the momentum and the price are pointing in the same direction. So as the price was was pushing lower and lower and lower, you could see negative momentum was picking up. But then in around here, you can see that the negative momentum is tapering off around the same time the price is starting to push higher. So you do want to see those two moving in, in the same direction. Since, uh, the, the, since last week, since last Wednesday, we have seen, um, sorry, Wednesday before that, we have seen that about, about, about 10 days ago a turnaround in, in cable that's broadly been pushing higher. And that's, and that's mimicked here by the decline in negative momentum and now the swing into positive momentum. And we're actually increasing positive momentum again. But the previous support, the 50 day moving average, is now acting as resistance. So that level uh, will need to be cleared before we can become more confident that the upward move we're seeing here is kind of a, is a wider part of the wider bullish move and not just a bounce back for this sell off before we actually move south again. So we would want to take off this, this price here, which comes into play not too far away from so just shout in around the. 12960, 129.60, 129.70 region. Should we move north of that, we we'll then be looking towards 130, and then beyond that, looking towards 130.59, up towards 131, and then 131.64. Any moves lower uh, in, in cable may find support from the 100 day moving average at 129.15, and then south of that, this, this low here from Thursday at 128.53. And then if you start to connect, take our previous lows that could be a sign that we're going to retest the low of august at 127.77 and then south of that we'll be looking towards back towards 127.16 looking at euro starting the euro has had a quite a good run recently has been uh, in a very clear concise upper trend versus the um versus the pound uh in over the last number of months so the big picture has been very much to the upside, uh, but as you can see here, the market has uh, has turned around somewhat, given back some of the gains that it has made. Also mimicked by the fact that we have seen a swing to negative momentum, and uh, we're still uh, we're still clearly in negative momentum on the euro starting. But similar to the euro dollar, uh, you you would want to see the market taking out um, with this previous high here. Uh, in at 9237, 92 kind of 40 region, before we can, be, can become more confident that this negative move here is just a pullback and make it a wider positive move. Um, and, should, and then of course, should we take out that? Should we should we take out this this price here in around the 9240? Would then be looking up towards uh, the recent high of just 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 north of 93 itself, and then on to 94 uh, in terms of price targets. If we take off this low here at 91 at 91.48, we then be looking back towards 90.88 and then 90 itself in terms of levels to watch out for to the downside on euro sterling. So dollar yen has been very much in a fairly obvious um, downward trend over the last number of months. We did see a creation of a, of a new multi-month low only, only last Tuesday. Uh, we, we are seeing some signs that the, kind of the move higher here in the dollar versus the yen is slightly, to, slightly uh, running out of steam. Um, if you look here at the positive momentum, notice that the positive momentum today has a bit has dipped a bit in comparison to 
uh, with last Friday. So it could be a sign that the kind of whatever upward move is kind of running out of steam. And if the market is going to turn over on itself, uh, we will be looking towards the downside target, potentially uh, the old support for the middle of August at uh, 108.63. And then south of that, the August low of uh, 108.26. And then sell that again, looking towards 108.13. Notice when the market was pushing here, it's a classic creation, you know, lower. The market's in a clear downward trend, uh, creates a new, a new multi-month low, pulls back, doesn't take out the previous high, wants to create a new, take out, takes out the previous low, creates a new multi-month low, and then when it bounces back, it doesn't take out the previous high. So while we, we remain south of the the 111 region. That could that could point to further losses for the dollar yen, but should we actually have a decisive break north of 111, that could just put put us back on track towards the kind of 112 region, and then and then north of that we'd be looking towards the 200-day moving average at 112.46. So I'll just do uh, sterling sterling yen, and then we'd be looking to wrap up the webinar. Just find it now, looking through the currencies. So looking at the, um, the, the sterling yen, um, look at the chart. It's been fairly obvious uh, since kind of since the um, since kind of mid mid July, I've been in a fairly clear downward trend. We have seen a bounce back, which can coincide with the kind of we, we, we have seen a push uh, somewhat of a pushback in, in the pound, particularly uh, against the, the U.S. dollar in the last number of weeks. Not too dissimilar here. Notice as well though that while the market was pushing lower, we did see. We did see momentum in very much negative territory. Now we're seeing the market bounce back and positive momentum has swung back to the positive side. But seeing as we sort of um, kind of run into somewhat resistance in around the 200 day moving average price, which previously acted as support here and some support here, it could be a sign that this is just a bounce back in the wider downward trend. So the 200 day moving average um, is comes into play at 142.46. So, so about 50 pips north of where we are currently. We would like to see a, a, a decisive move north of that. We would like to see the price action of in around the kind of 143 taken out before we can become more confident that this is just this is this is a kind of a resumption of, of a of a of a positive move uh, in the last couple of weeks rather than the market pushing lower, bounces back to the return day moving average, can't clear the return day moving average, and then goes on to create a new multi-month low. Uh, so like I said, you, you, be, you, you could be more confident of a, po a continued positive move if it takes out 143. Should you move north of 143, the old support acting now as resistance, the 50 day moving average at 144.15 would then be the next level to watch out for, and then north of that, 145. If the market does turn over on itself, and I can actually take out, the 200-day moving, moving, uh, moving average convincingly, um, and we see moves lower. This price here at 140 will be the next level to watch out for. South of that, the August low of 139.30, and then we'll be looking towards the June low in at 138.70. And then we're looking back towards 138, the figure. But the, uh, the the last market, you're welcome. The last market I'm not going to cover is, Australia, is the Australian dollar versus the US dollar because we've gone just a few minutes uh, beyond the schedule. So the Australian dollar, US dollar, has had a great run um, throughout, throughout 2017. Very kind of positive move, particularly from the May onwards. Um, as you can see here, as the market was pushing higher, it was it was somewhat reflected in positive momentum. And this is a good example of why I like to talk about momentum because. 
price is the most important thing you should be watching, but also you want to see the rate of change. Is the buying momentum slipping or not? So as you can see here, the market was pushing, creating new multi-month highs, which is great, but notice how it wasn't reflected in the momentum. The momentum initially was positive, but we're seeing buying momentum or positive momentum decline. So that's your first kind of warning sign that that's a divergence. The market's creating these multi-month highs, but it's doing so at a kind of, at a kind of reduced rate or kind of um, the buying pressure is uh, is uh, running out. And of course, that's your first, that is a signal in itself. And what do we see after that? We saw a pullback of a couple, of a, of a few hundred points. And then, of course, after we saw a pullback, negative momentum comes into play. And then we see a decline in negative momentum. So this move here, uh, you know, looking at this, at, at this year, we could potentially see a swing back to positive momentum. So should we see a, a turnaround, a continued push higher from the middle, from mid-August, upwards this could be a resumption of a wider positive trend that's been in play we could be looking towards 80 and then of course we'll be looking towards the uh, the august sorry, rather the july high of 8065 and then we're we'll looking towards 81 and then beyond that if any moves lower in uh in the aussie dollar we potentially find support in the 79 south of 79 we we'll are be looking at this price here in at 78 75 and then back down towards this price action here uh, of just just north of 78 itself before i finish up um on this webinar um i also want to you know thank you for your time and, and, and uh, attention as always uh, let's quickly show you on our site where the news analysis myself and my colleagues update the the news analysis section section on uh, several times uh, throughout the day this is where you can find the up-to-date news analysis um also pointing out other um, other webinars that we do have coming up on the horizon under the learn tab which where you found obviously this webinar uh, what we have um, on Wednesday uh, the Wednesday at half nine we have we, sorry well, actually start starting with tonight rather uh, we, we do have a webinar at 7 p.m. London time on Monday the 4th of September so tonight 7 o'clock uh, 7, uh, 7 p.m. London time uh, tra traders development uh, foundations of technical analysis of um, we, we have the we have this, this this webinar here on Wednesday at at half at half uh, seven. We have the commodity trends webinar, and then back to next week as we do every single Monday. We have the uh, the twelve fifteen webinar, which which is hosted by myself. Before I, before I let you go on our platform, just going to show you where we do market insights. Some of the some of the news analysis that we do. Is posted up on the news analysis section. Other 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 updates, uh, including economic data updates, gets put into the insight section here. So under market pulse, uh, second option down, uh, insights. Uh, for kind of a short uh, commentary, um, brief commentary on a particular chart, including a screenshot of a chart. That's that's that that can be found on our chart forum. So market pulse, third option down, uh, chart forum. Also. Um, if you're trading the financial markets, you should always be keeping an eye out for the economic indicators and announcements which are coming out. Once again, under market mar market pulse, the fourth option down is our economic calendar here. And um, this is just to give you a breakdown of what the previous report was, what the what the forecast was, and then also as soon as the numbers are out itself, it'll give you it'll, it'll update you immediately once those economic indicators have been uh, released. I've been Dave Madden here, at market analyst at CMC Markets. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in and listening. Please sign up for future webinars and have a good trading week and good luck.